Hi, my name is Roisin Carroll and I'm an analyst here at Presidian. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with custom tables and why you would use them over other table options in SPSS. We will look at how to build a table, some editing and formatting of tables and how to collapse categories. These features will help you build a cleaner, more customized table for your reports. Let's start out now. Most people, when they go to SPSS, they're going to go for your usual kind of tables that they're used to working with. Um, so take a data set. I'm using survey sample, but any, any of them is fine. I'm going to show you the tables that most people are using at the moment, but maybe they're not the best. And I'll show you some of the limitations and why custom tables are a good option. So I've brought across any categorical and any scale just for your um, example. And I'm going to run that out. So it's handy enough when I'm working with categorical data. Frequency tables are designed for it. I can get to see how many people are married, widowed, divorced. Have a look at what happens to my scale, though. This is a crazy table. That's not going to give me a lot of information at all. Um, and if you were to send that to someone in a report, it's going to look very, very busy without actually being meaningful. What I don't like about these standard tables is it's very difficult to remove columns. If I would have to go back and edit this manually. And, you know, I might not want to include cumulative percent. It doesn't really, it's not meaningful me, for me in this case. Let's have a look at one of the other options, which is descriptives. Now, again, I'm going to take across these two. I'm going to leave it the way it is. Yeah, it's great for my scale. I'm getting to see the min and max and mean. You can see I'm min and max and mean for a categorical, but that's not meaningful. It doesn't really add anything. I don't really know what maximum five of marital status is going to tell me. So it's not great at handling mixed variable types. And I'm going to just leave cross tabs are for categorical. Um, I could do scale in here, but it's going to give me a table similar to this. So I'll just leave it the way it is. Now, what's great about cross tabs is you can start doing statistical tests to see relationships between variables, such as chi squared. And any sort of related tests that might be useful. I can see, for example, I've got 138 people that are working time part time and are married. And it gives me my chi squared. But like I said, like, you know, there's not a lot. I can't build up tables here with different variable types. I can't include different types of analysis. So it, it is a little bit limited. This is where I like my custom tables. It's got a really nice interface to work with. It's drag and drop. So very intuitive. Um, you've got your icons here to tell you your variable types. So your scale and your categorical. If I right click in here, I can change the names. I can sort them by different, by order alphabetical, get some information about my variable. I can force change the variable type, which is a really handy feature, but it's only temporary. It applies to the table. If you wanted to change it, you'd have to go back in manually to your original data set and change it there. But it is great when you're working with tables to be able to do that and have it apply. So there you go, you know, I've changed it, click of a button. Now if I drag this across, it knows it's categorical, it's gonna want the count. Uh, like, let's get rid of that, just drag it away. And, you know, it's gonna know, well, you're probably gonna want the mean, which is very useful, uh, automatic feature. So let's start building up my first table. Let's bring across a couple of things here. I don't want you, I'm missing. Now, the way I dragged it across, um, you know, it's, it's a handy enough. You click on the button, it brings it back and forth. It's pretty self-explanatory. If I want to change the order of this, I can. If I want to change my labels, it's easy enough. Let's have a, a go at doing that. Whoops. Ooh. I think it's time for my copy. And I can change my formatting. There you go, include a couple of decimal points. And let's have a look at what that table is. 
So yeah, straight away you can already see like my table is exactly what I want. I'm not dealing with extra columns. I have great ability to change my titles, my labels, whatever. Let's go back to recent dialogues, bring back up my tables. And let's see, can I build this up, which I can. I'm going to take across another scale just to show you. And I just pop it underneath. There you go. Now you'll know it hasn't populated across, but there's a really quick uh, trick for that. Click back and say, I want it applied to all. And there you go. See, it's worked. Handy. Now, if you don't like the positioning, which some people prefer to have, instead of having it all going across, you're going to say, well, I want it down. I'll say, yeah, okay, I can do that. And there you go, done. Anytime you want, you can also undo your changes. Right click in, undo. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to keep it the way I had it because I quite like to read down, right? Now, say I wanted to include categorical. Let's see what happens. So I have my categorical here, right? I'm going to bring it down. Now, see this uh, red box? It's going to tell you where it's going to drop it, right? So if I drop it here, it's going to go on the outside. Let's just show you what happens. I now have my average TV for education level. So I'm going to see, for example, how many hours of TV the people in LT high school are watching. I'm going to keep my ages up above and it's going to nest it. As so. Now I'm going to take it out of nesting at the moment because I'd like to just see it underneath. So I'm going to say, yeah, pop it underneath for me. Now it's going to automatically go for count. Easy enough. I'm going to change that and say, I actually don't really want to count. You know, for categorical, it can mean better to use percentages. It kind of gets you, you know, kind of more meaning out of your. Your information. So I'm going to change that just a percent to keep it clean. Keep it as percent and I'm going to drop down my decimals, which is fine. And that's beginning to look like a table I can work with, which is great. Now, if I wanted to, I can also include a total underneath here. Say I wanted um, not just a percentage of, you know, my percentage of people per uh, education level, but I want to say, right, I want to see my total. And that'll pop under like so. It's automatically gone to percent, which is grand. This is what we originally told it to do. But if I want it to, I can say, well, actually, I don't want percentage. I'm going to go and see. I want to see how many people in total. And that's easy enough. And let's see what our table looks like now. So we're getting, we're getting somewhere. We're we're building up a table, it's going to look a little bit more useful. I can see the division, my distribution in, among education 7% in graduate level, 53 in high school. On average, they watch 2.86 um, hours of TV, and my age, average age, things like that, which is great. Let's go back now. And that's great. I mean, but what if I want to see the average hours of TV per education? Okay, so I'm going to do a cross. And you can see you've got your columns, you've got your rows, everything here is on the row at the moment. I'm going to take age out, drag it off, and I'm going to put that across. And now I'm going to get the average number of hours of TV per education. But I don't like the positioning, so let's just change that to columns. And now I've got my stats going across here. Okay, position of my stats is in the columns. And I've got my high school here, and it's going to give me the average number, the average hours of TV my juniors are watching, which is exactly what I wanted. And let's see what that looks like. Great. I'm getting my table to look the way I want it to look. I'm pretty happy with that, right? But say, for example, you say, well, 
that's great, but I want to collapse a few categories here. I don't want to have all of my high school, all of my juniors listed, my bachelors, my graduates, everybody. That's pretty easy to, to do. What I want you to do is click in and say I want to add a subtotal. I'm going to say these are my, my high school students. And just for ease of use, I'm just going to add in another here and say these are my third level students. Now, as it is, it's going to give me a subtotal. It's going to be a combination of these two, but it's going to keep them. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. You can say, I actually only want to keep the subtotal and I don't want to look at what goes into the subtotals. So you just say hide. And it's hidden those for me. At any stage as well, remember, you can always change this position and it'll reactivate whatever was in here it goes outside. It's not going to be included in your subtotal but I want it to be, so I'm going to keep it. And I'm going to say, I want to hide that as well. And that gives me how much TV my high school students are watching and how much TV my third level students are watching. So they're watching like a little bit more. Now this is really, really useful when it starts to coming to do statistical tests, such as chi-squared, where you might want to start collapsing categories. And we're going to look at that in the second video, but for now, that's just a quick introduction to how it's done. If you're happy with your table, which I am, we're going to add a title to it. I'm lazy, I don't want to write, my, I can write a, a title here if, I, if you want to, but I'm just going to use the table expression. So I'm going to put a caption on it. I'm going to give it a date and I'm going to give it a time. And there you go, we have our table built. So we've looked at building a table using mixed variable types, changing the position of your variables and adding some styling to your tables, adding titles and collapsing categories. Now that you have that basis, you should be able to clean, build a clean, well-designed and customized table faster. You can find more information, videos and other tips and tricks on our website. You can also subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on social media so you'll never miss a thing.